The Nuggets added subtle nuances to their playbook, and it was unpredictable for Miami. The Nuggets have changed this delay SDS to instead have the two in KCP come over from the right corner to set a flare for Jokic. The one in Jamal, instead of the screenshot displays, stays positioned on the right wing. Jokic then sets the on-ball for Murray as KCP pops, and Jamal gets leverage for a downhill attack before floating it over Adebayo. Denver's Knicks elbow split action has changed to having Murray receive a flare from Porter who's acting as the two. Jokic then finds Murray who drives and orchestrates a two-man game on the low block with Gordon to generate a bucket. Horn's dive has Murray find Jokic in the pocket with Gordon lurking in the dunker spot and the three in Porter Jr. make a great read to cut back door as Struce brings the help. Same playset for their next bucket right here, but this time the right corner defender in love stays solid, so Jokic just stops short and drops it home with elite touch from the foul line. Delay pin with Jokic dishing from the far left wing, and Christian Brown acting as the one and just cutting through instead of setting a solid pin, allows Gordon to duck in and seal before finishing around the smaller Martin. Nick's back motion is adjusted to have the two in Bruce Brown on the right instead of the left, and both the three and four spaced out on the left side. Murray makes the same V-cut after sending the entry to Brown, then Brown sends the entry to Jokic, and since the three in green is on the weak side instead of the strong side, he's able to screen for Christian Brown, which opens up the backdoor slam for two of Christian's 15 on the night. In this horns rip DHO, with Murray acting as the two and all of Brown, Gordon, and KCP branched out on the right to open up the weak side. Jokic pitches the dribble handoff to Murray. Miami opts to switch the screen, but Bam is way too far back with Jamal's Curry type range. Game three of the finals was a back and forth affair in the opening half, but to open the third, Malone sets a tone for what would be a 24 minute stretch in which he dominated the coaching battle. To open the third frame, the Nuggets run one of their go-to actions called Flip Pin Jokic, which we've actually looked at in a video before. Gordon's acting as the two, and after a Jokic cross screen on Porter, which gets him to flip from the right to the left wing, the one in Murray then sets a pin down for Jokic, getting him enough room for his patented high arcing jumper. Here they run a Horns Duck, which has Murray use Jokic's screen instead of Porter's. Both Jokic and Porter pop, and Gordon duck in on the right side. A lot of teams like to mix in this early offense double drag playset, and that's in Denver's bag. As Jokic pops instead of rolls, Gordon opens up space with a roll, and Jokic is then wide open to catch and up fake on the slow to recover bam before attacking downhill and finishing over Kevin Love. As I said, most teams are capable of running that double drag action. What they don't have the capacity to execute is this 5-4 ball screen action with a center like Jokic creating off the dribble. And after getting Love switched onto him, watch the pristine footwork, awareness, and impulsiveness to stop on a dime, use a pivot right and inverted pivot before Sambor shuffling. That's just incredible balance and shot making. Delay flare slip action entails the floor is fully spaced out with shooters in both corners, while the 5 in Jokic sets a flare for Porter, who's acting as the 4. After coming off the screen, Porter slips to the basket, Jokic pops and receives the swing pass for the catch and shoot. KCP shows you his underrated ability to manufacture and knock down shots for himself off the bounce in this basic spread ball screen action. Down the stretch, with Miami in a 2-3 zone, plays like this one where Murray whips the post entry to Jokic, then points to the cutting brown to signal for a swing pass from Jokic, saw Denver not have to run too many set plays, but instead read and react to that heat coverage. Murray simply attacks Martin on a downhill slope, knowing Vincent has to be the second man pressed up on the opposite side and can't help, so he sheds Martin with a stop on a dime and leaning back midi. This time with Miami in a 3-2 zone, the Nuggets run a chin playset that we saw from the Heat in Game 2, but Christian Brown is acting as the one, while in this case the two in Murray gets a screen from Jokic, and after initially drift cutting to the left corner, Brown shuffle cuts to the basket to finish over the smaller Lowry for the and one. Desperate for anything at the back end of the shot clock, this handoff from Jokic to Murray at the top of the arc shows you the chemistry between the NBA's best duo right now, as with the Heat going back to the 2-3 zone, the two defenders up top converge onto Murray, who after getting the clean Jokic big body, fades back like Kobe, 
with two defenders in his grill. Another late shot clock connection between Joker and Blue Arrow. Murray goes up into his jumper like he did the last time, but passes out of it in this instance, finding Joker who up fakes, jab steps, spins left, and somehow maintains the balance while drifting off out of bio. This time, Murray fully breaks down the Miami zone by penetrating the lane, extending to bring it away from Adebayo, before masterfully floating it over him and off the top of the backboard. Before those pick and rolls, we looked at a lot of in-depth motion in today's video, focusing a lot on the action that fuels Denver's success. However, when it comes to the connectivity between Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, their ability to vibe off one another goes much further than just what goes on between the lines. Here was Blue Arrow breaking down that. I'd say it's uh, it's a trust and a feel. It's the best way for me to put it. It's not really X's and O's. Um, it's just reading the game and, and, and trust that the other's going to make the right play. You know, if he throws it to me, he, ex he knows and expects what to see from me. And he knows the mood I'm in. Um, the intensity I'm playing with, whether it's low or high, um, time and score. And, uh, and vice versa, you know, I know when he's overpassing, I know when he's looking to score, I know when he's the best player on the floor, I know when he's taking a second to get into the game. I think it's just a feel and a trust that we're going to figure it out. And it's a lot of unselfishness, like I keep bringing that up, it's just, it's free flowing. If something's there, we go. If it's not, we don't force it. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he makes tough shots look easy. And... He's been doing it for a very long time, and I think the consistency doesn't get talked about enough. If you enjoyed that breakdown and want to see more, first of all, leave a like on this video for the YouTube algorithm. Help the channel reach 100k by subscribing. We're so close to reaching that mark. And follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great one. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.